one. So we are now on our third little piece. We already talked about the hierarchy, cells and organelles and all of that. Then we talked about the terminology. We talked about directional terms and regional terms. Now we're talking about planes. Okay, so when you look at, look at like, for example, an organ, and you're looking at a section, a cut of that organ, what you what you see depends on how you cut it and this is especially true for looking through histology which just means looking at slides or pictures of microscopic things what it looks like really depends on how you cut it so it's very important that you understand that there are multiple different planes and then we're all going to use the same words to describe how everything was cut up so that we understand what we're looking at Okay, so let's start with sagittal. For the sagittal plane, again, you have that midline. So if you cut along in the midline, that would be called midline, that would be called mid-sagittal or median. But any of those cuts that you divided into a right and a left half, okay, so anything that, would cut, and it doesn't have to be in the middle again, it could be anywhere along here that divides into a right side and a left side, that would be called sagittal okay so that is a sagittal plane a sagittal section or a sagittal cut okay the next one is transverse transverse means that you cut horizontally okay so horizontal cuts here those are the I'll cut along the transverse plane and so that's going to divide up the specimen or the body into a top and a bottom. And the reason I like to describe it like that is because that helps me remember it. The transverse plane gives you a top, top and a bottom. By the way, sometimes in histology, this is sometimes referred to as a cross section, but I will be using the term transverse section most of the time. Okay, so again, a horizontal cut through, that is a transverse section, a transverse cut. Okay, next one, frontal. Okay, for frontal, pretend like I have a piece of glass sticking through my face. Okay, so if you have a piece of glass right here and it divides the body into a front and a back, that would be called a frontal section. Okay, that's how I remember it. Front and back, that's a frontal. By the way, you may hear the term coronal. A coronal section is the same thing as a frontal section. Okay, but I like to use the word frontal because it's easier for me. So that's what I'm going to use. Okay, so let's see how it goes. So if we look at this picture right here, and here we have all of these are, are MRIs where you're looking at the brain. The only difference is you're looking at it from multiple different planes. And you'll notice that when we look at the brain from multiple different planes, each one looks different from the other one. Okay, so which of these would be the transverse plane that would divide it from top and bottom? The answer for that would be B. Okay, so this one right here is right about here. You can see, you can see the eyes in front. So it's if we took the whole head off, that is the transverse plane. So this one right here would be sagittal. Okay, so if you kind of cut down the middle and kind of look at open it up like that, that's sagittal. And this one right here would be frontal, as if you took the whole face off in front and looked at it from right there. Okay, so again, it's important that you are able to describe the plane so that you understand what you're looking at, because you'll notice all of the pictures look differently from each other. Okay, so let's go into some body cavities. So a cavity just means a space right? A space inside of the body cavity. So when, as we go through these body cavities, I think the most important thing for you to understand is how to organize all of these different words together, okay? So we're going to have two main body cavities, two main ones, and all of the other ones will be subcavities sub of these two main cavities. Okay, so try to keep it organized for yourself. We're gonna build a tree together to, to hopefully figure that out. Okay, so when we look at the body cavities here, the two main ones are the dorsal body cavity and the ventral 
body cavity. So thinking back to what we've already learned, what does dorsum mean? Dorsum means back, okay? So the dorsal body cavity is everything that's in the back of your body, posterior. And then the ventral, ventral means belly, right? So the ventral body cavity would be everything in the belly side, the front side of the body. All of the other cavities that I'm about to talk about are gonna fit into one of these two main categories. Okay, so let's go through these. As we go through, I expect you to know the names of the cavities, and I also expect you to know what organs will be found in each one of those cavities. Okay, so starting with the dorsal cavity, there are two subdivisions of the dorsal cavity. We have the cranial cavity, here's the cranial cavity, and then we have the vertebral cavity, and the vertebral cavity is created when you take all of the vertebrae stacked up on top of each other and you see the hole in the middle of them. That creates the vertebral cavity. So what organ is found in the cranial cavity? That would be the brain, okay? Only one organ there, the brain, okay? And then coming off here, what organ would be found inside of the vertebral cavity that's surrounded and protected by those vertebrae? That would be the spinal cord. Okay, so the cranial cavity contains the brain and the vertebral cavity, which is created by the inside the vertebrae, contains the spinal cord. That's it for the dorsal cavity. On to the ventral cavity. So again, the ventral cavity, ventral means belly side, so it's on the front side. The two main categories for the ventral cavity are the thoracic cavity and the abdominal pelvic cavity. Okay, so for those of you who are starting to learn your regional terms, what does thoracic mean? Chest. This is your thoracic region. This is your thoracic cavity. So basically think about it this way. In everything inside of your rib cage, that's going to be your thoracic cavity. Now, between the thoracic cavity and the abdominal pelvic cavity, which is all this stuff down here, there's a very thin sheet of skeletal muscle. And that thin sheet of skeletal muscle is called the diaphragm. And the diaphragm is very important for breathing. What it does is it pulls down the thoracic cavity, which creates pressure changes that allows you to breathe. But for in this class right now, I need you to know that the diaphragm is the structure that separates the thoracic cavity from the abdominal pelvic cavity, okay? Very important for you to understand now. Okay, so now let's go into thoracic cavity. For the thoracic cavity, you have three more subdivisions, okay? So if we look inside, this is a picture of a cadaver. Here, down here, this sheet, it's a very thin kind of dome-shaped sheet of skeletal muscle. That's called, that's the diaphragm. There's your heart right there. Okay, so all of this, there's, there's, you can even see the cut ribs right there. All of this right here would be the thoracic cavity. Now, within the thoracic cavity, again, three different subcategories, so, sorry, subcavities. The first is the pleural cavity, pleural cavity. Now, what organ do you think this is? What does it look like? That is the lungs. So the pleural cavity only includes one organ. That is the lungs. So from here on out, when you see plural, it's, that means it's related to the lungs. Okay, so you can go ahead and write that on your list of prefixes and, and root words. Plural means lungs. Okay, so plural means lungs. So that means that the plural cavity is going to include just the lungs, that's it. Okay, the next one is called the mediastinum. By the way, sometimes this is referred to as the superior mediastinum, okay? So I kind of go back and forth, but usually I, I often just say mediastinum. So what is media? What is that referring to? Like medial, right? It's right in the middle, okay? So the mediastinum is this region right here in the very middle, okay? And inside here, kind of sandwiched between the lungs and underneath the heart, or on top of the heart, I meant to say, all of this right here, that is the mediastinum. So what types of stuff is in there? 
Okay, so there's two different, two major things. The biggest thing would be blood vessels. Okay, so for example, this right here, there's the aorta right here. This is the superior vena cava. Major, really big blood vessels. Those are all going to be found in the mediastinum. And the other thing that's actually not shown in this picture right here, because it's been di dissected out, would be the thymus. And the thymus is sort of a diffuse little organ that kind of sits right on top of those blood vessels, and it's involved in your immune system. Okay, so your thymus is another organ that could be found in the thoracic cavity. Okay, so that's two, one more. The last one is going to be the pericardial cavity. Okay, so the pericardial cavity only includes one organ again, and that is the heart. Okay, so one thing I need you to understand is again, break those words down so you know what they mean. Peri means around, and the way I remember it is perimeter, right? Peri, perimeter. Okay, so peri means around, around the outside, and cardi means heart. Okay, so we got plural is lungs, peri is around, and cardi is heart. Make sure those end up on your list there. So what this is, it's the cavity that surrounds the heart. There you go. Anatomy, they're not that imaginative. They just come up with names that describe what they are. So if you know what the little words mean, you got a description right there. Okay, let's go into the abdominal pelvic cavity. Okay, so again, looking at the cadaver here, here is the diaphragm right there. Underneath the diaphragm, there's the liver. In that, liver, in that abdominal pelvic cavity, you got all of your guts. Okay, so here is your liver. Let me see. Oh, by the way, down here would be the pelvic cavity, not really shown. But in here, we have the liver. We've got that gallbladder. The gallbladder is green because it contains bile and bile is green. If you've ever thrown up something, you might know that. Okay, and then next to it is the stomach. So notice that the liver is off to the right and the stomach is off to the left and sandwiched between the liver is the gallbladder. And then we have two different types of intestines. We've got the large intestine, which is this big one here that goes around the outside. And then we have the small intestine. The difference between those, their name comes from the size, the diameter of the tube, not the total volume of the, of the organ. So smaller diameter, that's a small intestine. The fatter one is the large intestine. All of those are gonna be in the abdominal, abdominal cavity. And then the pelvic cavity in, contains things like, if you're female, you have your uterus there. If, you're, if you have your blood, urinary bladder in there, urethra is in there, those kinds of things. Rectum's in there too, okay? Um, sometimes textbooks take the abdominal pelvic cavity and separate them into two, kind of subdivisions further. We have the abdominal cavity and the pelvic cavity, but in real life, there's no physical separation. So you can, if you choose, just sort to put them all in one piece as abdominal pelvic cavity. Okay, so I think the most challenging part about the body cavities is kind of organizing it for yourself. Okay, so what I would like you to do is to go ahead and take a moment and try to create a diagram for yourself. Okay, so what I want you to do is to create a, to create a, a, um, a web diagram for yourself. Okay, so what I mean by that is you're going to start with the most broad topic in the middle, and that broad topic would be body cavities. That's what we're talking about. What were the two major categories, the two major cavities in the body? First, you have the dorsal cavity and then the ventral cavity. And then from there, you're going to branch off into all of the subcategories all for each one. Okay, so the, the reason I, I'm not going to collect this or anything, the reason I'm I strongly suggest that you do this is to help organize it and set it in your mind. So broad to specific. And then the other thing that I suggest that you do, since you're already working on it, is go ahead and put a little, what organs are found in each one of those subcategories. Okay. That's enough for now. I'm going to stop.